bless you all. It is good to be together this morning. And if you are here in the sanctuary, we welcome you. And if you are watching our live stream, we also welcome you. And if you're watching this later in the week, the taped version of our service, we welcome you. If you're watching, if you're here, you are part of our church family today. And we welcome you to worship the Lord and praise God together. Our call to worship talks to God about our hearts as we begin worship this morning. Gracious God, today we ask you to transform our hearts, that we might be better able to do your work. Give us compassionate hearts, so that we may love others as we love ourselves. Give us grateful hearts, so that we may unwrap every new day as the gift it is. Give us generous hearts, so that we may share all that you have given us. Thank you, God, for sharing your heart with us. Would you join me in prayer? Gracious and loving God, we are thankful that we are able to worship together today. We ask that your Holy Spirit would enter into our hearts to encourage us, enlighten us, and point us in the way that you would have us to go. We beseech you today, Lord, that you would intercede for each of us as we pray together, as we sing together, as we listen to your word. And we ask that we would leave here today feeling better than when we came and feeling ready for the week ahead. We ask all of these things, and then we remember that Jesus taught us the perfect prayer. And so now we pray together in that way, with that prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you. 
Amen. You guys are allowed to say that too. This is a Baptist church. Say amen. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Ecclesiastes. And if you read that book all the way through, uh, you'll come out having been enriched and your heart enlarged uh, from experiencing this book of the Bible, but also uh, a little bit bewildered because there's not a recurrent theme through the whole book and uh, it's teachings to students. And so uh, there is not a necessarily coherent thread as in some of the books that are story based and uh, so uh, this is a teaching out of the third chapter and it may be familiar to you and it talks about time and that's our subject for this morning our subject is about the stewardship of time so from the holy bible what we call the old testament what we could call the hebrew scriptures from the third chapter i read this there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven a time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain, a time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. What does the worker gain from his toil? I have seen the burden God has laid upon men. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the hearts of men, yet they cannot fathom what God has done from beginning to end. I know that there is nothing better for men than to be happy and to do good while they live, that everyone may eat and drink and find satisfaction in all his toil. This is the gift of God. I know that everything God does will endure forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing taken away from it. So time. We could go through each of those verses and give examples. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to search and a time to give up. But instead, I'd like to just use that as a springboard for us to think about time and how we use it and what it means to us. Sometimes folks, including me, have an experience in their life or a loss in their life which makes them realize how precious time is. Some folks, on the other side of that coin, feel that there's limitless time, that they're gonna be here forever, and there's all the time they could possibly need from now to eternity. But we probably would all agree that we have seasons in our life, as Ecclesiastic puts it, a time for this and a time for that. But we have seasons in our childhood, in our young adulthood, middle age, older age, older, older age. We have different seasons or doing different activities. The folks in that same age group, for instance, could be having children at the same time we are. And you share those experiences in that season of life. But those friendships and connections may not continue on into older adult life. When you move out of your house and move into a smaller place, you might be making new friends instead of getting together with those older acquaintances. Just a little example, but the seasons of our life come and go. Sometimes we choose them, sometimes they're forced on us, sometimes it's a compromise to make things work in our families, but the seasons of our life are important to think about. 
It's also important to think about where God is leading in each season of our life. Sometimes people will say to me, well, I don't know if I want to serve on that board anymore. I don't know if I want to do that volunteer job in the church anymore. And I try to say, well, what's God leading you to now? Our skills and our desires and our talents can change over the seasons of our life. And we may be ready to pick up a new thing to do and let other folks take over those things we are that we are called to move away from. Where is God leading in your life? Is that something you think about? Sometimes we have to find that out by a little bit of trial and error. And sometimes we can hear a voice that comes from God. A voice that is telling something positive and encouraging, but it's not something inside that we have thought of ourselves. Have you ever experienced that? You have this thought, you're in the line at McDonald's, and all of a sudden it occurs to you that you should pay for the person in back of you. Now this is not something you would normally think of. Where did that thought come from? But it's positive, it's generous. So when you get up to the window, you say, um, how much is the person behind me's lunch? And they'll say, 12.47. You say, well, can you just add mine and theirs together and let me pay for them? That voice that says, hey, why don't you pay for their lunch, could be a voice from God. Something you wouldn't normally do, something outside of your own thoughts, but something that is positive, encouraging to someone else. You may never have had that experience, or it may have come in a different way that you felt God was talking to you. But God speaks in very concrete ways through talking to our Christian friends and those of like mind, God talks in very obvious ways when we read and study the Bible and learn lessons from that. And if you say, God has never spoken to me, yeah, God has spoken to me. You may not have realized it was God. You may not have been observing and thinking about how did that idea come to you or why did you start going to church again? God is looking for every opportunity to be in our lives and to be with us and show us his love. When we think of the seasons of our life and when we think where God might be leading us, it leads us to think about what our priorities are. I used to use a planner. It was a big notebook and it had a big page for every day. And I'd write down my whole schedule and all my meetings and everything I was going to do. And Once a week, I would go through the Stephen Covey method, and I would look at my roles and goals for the week. Does anybody do that anymore? I don't know. But I would think about the different roles in my life as a pastor, as a, a daughter, as a neighbor. And then within each of those roles, I would think about what's my goal for this week to call my mother twice, to go to the next door neighbor and say, boy, I really love that Italian cooking. Here's your containers back from last time. And on down the list. I don't do that detail planning anymore, but I do think about how to spend my time and what my priorities are. And you might as well. Or you might not think about what your priorities are. You may just do whatever the emergency is at the moment. Let's fight this fire, let's get this done, let's take care of this. And then later on, I have time to call mom or do the dishes or whatever it is that you'd like to get to. So how we spend our time speaks to our priorities, where God is leading, and what season of life we are in. So today I'd like to use an example to illustrate how it's important to know what our priorities in life are and to make room for those first in our life. So I have this glass vase here with uh, rocks in it. Uh, they are painted rocks, but we'll just skip past that odd little piece of information and uh, uh, we'll just go ahead with the experiment. If you want to know why I have painted rocks, you can, you can ask me y'all. That might be a story for a different day. Yeah. So these big rocks would illustrate in our lives 
the big things, the things that uh, we believe, even if we don't act on them all the time, the things that we believe are the most important. So uh, God uh, would be a, a big rock there, and uh, being together with our Christian friends might be another one. Uh, work could be one or two or three. Um, taking care of our kids, uh, our grandkids, our mothers, our fathers, family, relationships, and, and what we do. And uh, I'm sure you can think of other big rocks in your life, other priorities in your life. Taking care of your home, your pets, um, communicating. Um, if there's um, an activity you love, chess, stamp collecting, Pokemon. Maybe that's just me. Crafts, reading, yard work, all those things might be big rocks for you. So that's what those represent in that. And then what we find as we go along in life is that there's other things that are smaller. I mentioned doing the dishes a while ago, but uh, if we put these big rocks in first, then there's still some room, wouldn't you say, in here? So if we sprinkle little rocks in here, what they're going to do is fill in the cracks, fill in the spots. Let's see if they go all the way. Are they going all the way to the bottom? Let's see. When I bought these rocks at Home Depot, I was so excited about this example. And I had to tell the young man about them who was taking them out to my car very kindly. And uh, he said, oh, that sounds interesting. And I thought, he doesn't think it's interesting. <laughs> I think you have to see it to really get it. Well, we can take a while and kind of move some of these big rocks to get some of the little rocks down in the and the holes. Let's see. See if I can do that easily. If not, we'll just imagine it. The others are stuck in there. Are there any trustees in here? Because if you are, just take a breath. <laughs> <laughs> we'll clean it up afterwards. There. Yep. All right. Well, you get the idea that these little rocks are going to uh, move down in there if we really shake it uh, hard and do that. So then, those little rocks would be what? Those little rocks would be um, doing the dishes so your spouse doesn't have to. Making the coffee in the morning for those who drink coffee in the household. That would be uh, checking your kids' homework. That would be um, letting the kids next door run across your lawn to get to their friend's house. That would be being extra nice to a coworker that you know is having a hard time. That would be the things that are not the big rocks in your life, but go together to make your life better and more coherent and uh, easier to swallow when the difficult times come. I really want to get one of these rocks out of here so you can do that. Let's see. Oh, that's not gonna work. Those are in there pretty good. <laughs> there we go. That's going to help. All right, because the next thing I'm going to do is bring this bucket of sand over here. Now, if you're a trustee, you should be very afraid. Because sand is not as easy to get out of the carpet as little rocks. So the sand, we can say, would fit between <coughs> the little bits of rocks here and there. And uh, it helps to uh, make some space, or take up some space, rather, uh, in our jar of life. And uh, when I think about it, this example works better than it's working today, right here. <laughs> but the idea is that, indeed, the sand fills in between the little rocks, and uh, we get more filled up in our jar. So you can see up here at the, top, at the top how that's happening. Let's turn around. So. Yeah, you can see that up at the top how that 
sand get between the little rocks? This part of things. So what is the sand in our life? What does that represent? Well, that might represent not swearing at the guy who cuts you off on the highway. That might be uh, in the morning when you leave, stopping in the driveway to get your neighbor's newspaper and tossing it up on their porch. It might be telling a coworker, hey, you know what? I noticed that your badge holder is in really bad shape, but I have an extra one. Would you like it? It would be the little things that you do just as a matter of course in your day to help those around you or just to be a nice person. There's a lot more to being a Christian and following God than just being a nice person. But that goes a long way in a lot of situations being nice and helping others. So we have the big rocks, the foundation of our life, the, the little rocks that kind of uh, fill in some of the gaps that are important in our lives, the sand, which are almost the unconscious things that we do. And wouldn't you say that's a pretty full life? Wouldn't you say that's a pretty full jar? Yeah, nod your heads this way, that's good, yeah. Well, there's one more thing that we can do with this. We can take water and we can pour it in this and see what happens. We thought there was no more room and that the little rocks and the sand had taken up all the spaces they could. But we see that there's still more room and still more room and still more room. <laughs> As we pour it in here, we begin to think, now, we've used the big rocks, the little rocks, the sand. What would the water be? And isn't it amazing how much water I got in here after all these other things were put in? Well, the water could easily represent the Holy Spirit in our lives. We have a lot of confusion sometimes about what the Holy Spirit does and what its role is, but the Holy Spirit dwells within us, instructs us, enables us, encourages us, and the Holy Spirit washes over everything. This doesn't look very clean, but it looks coated. And the Holy Spirit coats our lives with God's presence and helps us to be ready for the things that come up in our lives and it fills in and makes whole our life. It puts everything together. So there we go. That's an interesting uh, example. And you've never done this before when, when I had tried this example, but I'd like to try it today. I'd like to try doing it the opposite way. If you have the Holy Spirit in your life, that's super good. But if you don't have a real purpose or plan, if you don't know what your priorities are, sometimes those little everyday things can just sort of take over. And you never quite have time for the really important stuff. And then let's say you do remember to help your kid with their homework, or you do remember to get the oil changed in your car. And a little while, the emergencies, you kind of get ready and you kind of stick those in there. And then you can see that fills things up quite a bit. And when you come to put the big rocks in there, the most important things in your life, you'll find that there's not much room for them. Look at that. The water, the sand, the little rocks fill up the whole vessel. And there's hardly any room for the very most important things. And they just kind of get stuck on the top as an afterthought. So the idea here, which you can see with these two vessels here, is to put the big rocks in your life first. When you're thinking about time management, 
when you're thinking about your priorities, when you're thinking about where God is leading, you need to have the big rocks in first. Your love of God, your being together with other Christians, your work, your family, your spouse. Those are the big rocks that we put in first. And everything else will follow along after that. The book of Ecclesiastes, as I said in the beginning, is a wonderful book to watch, listen to, hear, however it is that you experience the Bible. And it tells us about the seasons in our life and the time that we have. So the advice that we can take for our lives today is not to waste our time on all the small things first, but to make sure the big priorities, the big rocks, are in our lives first so that we can live our best life and know that we are aiming where God would love us to aim. Well, that was fun, and I didn't make too much of a mess, so uh, I hope this will be a memorable example for you of our time and our priorities and putting God in the middle of our lives with the big rocks. I'd invite you to take your bulletin and sing with me In the Garden, a favorite hymn of many of us. And I invite you to join in this morning. Those who need comforted, we ask you to encourage those who need encouraged. 
We know, Lord, that you can do everything and all things. And we would ask that as we intercede for ourselves and others in prayer, that you would hear us and that you would give us answers and that you would help us to understand those answers. We ask, too, Lord, that you would speak to each of us that we might hear your word for our lives, whether it be your voice, or whether it be through the Bible, or whether it be through a message here at church, or through, or through being outside and walking in the woods in the beautiful fall weather. But we ask however it is that you can get through to us, that you do that, oh God, that we might hear and love all the more because of it. We ask your blessing on this church and this community and indeed the whole world as we struggle through this era of worry and concern over COVID. And we ask that you would help us to be loving and caring and sharing in all ways possible, not only in this difficult time, but throughout our lives. And all of this we ask in the Master's name. Amen. Well, I wonder if you'll think about this example this week. And I wonder if you'll think about what are the big rocks in your life? What do they represent, these different colored stones? And are you putting them first in your life? If that's something that you need to talk about, I'm happy to do that with you. If you are not here in person worshiping with us, you're welcome to contact our church. I'd be happy to talk with you. And the invitation is given to come back next week. The invitation is given if you're watching uh, the live stream that you can come and worship with us. Uh, we wear masks and we socially distance and uh, we are careful about how we interact with each other, still with love and joy, just at a farther range than we used to. So we would invite you to be with us next week in person or on the internet and we hope that you will feel God's presence this week. Our benediction for this month goes like this as we end our service. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. The rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hands. Amen.